Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. We're here to do one that's kind of been on my mind for a little while, but I didn't have any real reason until right now. I think it was in my cheap air compressor upgrades video, and there is an air tools and air compressors playlist if you want to go check out other topics along this line. I'll link that right up there and down in the description for you. I replaced one of these quick connect fittings and just pissed about half the audience off. It's one of my most disliked videos. I think primarily for two reasons. One reason is I was using my channel locks, and I think my vice grips too, upside down, which just triggered legions of people. And that's fine, I get it. It's not the right way to do it, okay. And I should also say it before I go too far that a lot of the people that were upset about this uh, were telling me in good faith. They weren't being mean about it. There's only about a handful of people that I think were just straight up being trolls. And I do appreciate feedback from you guys when I'm doing something wrong because I don't know everything. Who does, you know? Truth is, I knew better than to do this. I just wasn't paying any much attention and it never really seemed to make much of a difference to me. But believe me, message received. We'll be using it the right way from now on. And I suspect maybe the other reason was this air filter. Maybe people didn't like fabrication on it or whatever. Frankly, I don't like it either now that it's done. And I've lived with it for a while. But we have a chance for some redemption on the air fitting portion of that at least. Because this guy has exactly the same problem the guy in that video did. Where it's full of rust and it's bypassing air. And when I say it's full of rust, you'll, I think you'll be able to see it. There's chunkies down in there. And it's all rust colored. The hose this mates into looks exactly the same. You can see all the rust down in there. That is from my compressor tank just rotting to death and dying a slow, painful death. And in fact, I'm pretty sure the compressor is dead right now. I found this problem while in the process of troubleshooting the compressor. But since I'm here, let's have some air fitting redemption for old Max. Because these are still nice fittings and it's not the fittings fault that it got filled from rust from a crappy air compressor with uh, my poor maintenance habits. Meaning I don't drain the water out of it nearly as often as I should. But anyway, another criticism I've gotten on that video is that people were upset I was using channel locks and or vice grips at all. Because if you use the right size wrench you don't round things off and blah blah blah. Completely agree with those people. However, I don't think they understood and I'll take the blame for it because it's the guy with the camera. If I don't show it to you, you don't get to see it that there is nowhere to put a wrench on this thing. This hex portion back here is just for assembly. So that's just for when you screw it onto your hose. To be able to actually disassemble it, you have to grab onto this knurling with something and unthread it from the knurling. And let me tell you, whether or not I use the tool incorrectly or correctly, these things are insanely tight. So what I should have done in that video was start with the vice grips, which is what I'm gonna do here. And I'm just gonna chuck this guy up in the vise and clamp on it and try and spin it off there without chewing it up too terribly badly so we can clean it out. We're gonna to wanna to get these guys on here and make sure that they don't hit the hex. And I think they just barely clear. Okay, so we're nice and tight. We can break it loose, there it goes. There. Since I started nice and tight, and I'll give credit for being the correct direction and everything, came off without doing much slipping. Still plenty freaking tight. I think you can hear how tight it is. There's probably going to be spring of things in here. And eh, not too bad. So there we go. Got her apart. You see I scarred it up just a little bit with the vice grips, but not too bad. We should be able to get our spring out. Oh yeah, look at all the crap that's coming out with it. Yeah, it's the same story as the other one. Just so much junk from water in the tank and everything. It's just got these things corroded. I think I will try and contact Milton and see if they have a replacement for these. Maybe I can order factory replacements or better yet would be stainless because these things are just chewed way up. Again, I'll take the blame for it, but it'd be nice if I had some where I didn't even have to worry about it that are just rated for water. That would be fine with me. And email them I did and at initial contact, a little less courteous than I would have hoped. I'm not going to screen cap it because I don't want to put them on blast that hard. The guy I was talking with thought I was asking about one of these fittings. So, okay, he may have thought I was screwing around with him or something, like one of these rusted through. And once I explained myself, he was a little nicer about it. I sent him a picture of the damage of this one. The net result was still, no, Milton doesn't offer anything but this. Which is too bad, because even in the email they said, yeah, this is a brass connector. Well, that's a steel insert, and it's a mild steel insert. And in fact, it is magnetic. It's hard to show magnetism on camera. But what I'm trying to grab on is that little plunger down inside. Now the balls are going to be steel, which is okay. But that little plunger... It's our rusty guy. I think you can see it grabbing on the way out. So that's a no-go, is at least the way I'm using these, which I admit my compressor is killing these, not them killing themselves. So is Indiana climate. It's super humid here, and I'm always gonna be passing some amount of water through my air. There's just no way around it. So I'm gonna make good on a promise from several months ago 
and I'm going to start switching out to Parker's. It's almost not even fair to call these two competitors, and I'll show you why. First off, there's just plain old cost. This Parker probably weighs about twice what this Milton does. So I would guess there's, I mean, half again more brass in this thing. Even if I'm exaggerating, I'll say 25%. This also has a neat feature I didn't even know it had when I ordered it. And that's reflected in the price. These are like five or six bucks. They're still better than the cheap ones at Harbor Freight. This guy was like $15. Uh, if there's a local Parker hydraulic store, I might be able to get them cheaper than that. I don't know. I've never been to one of those stores. That kind of is what it is. Another thing, anecdotally, these are put together such that they have wrench flats. So you can actually take them apart without marring them up like I had to for the Milton. But another cool feature of this thing, which I didn't know it had when I ordered it, is the little balls inside are actually only half circles. And that is part of the engagement system on this thing where you don't have to pull the collar back to engage it. You can just clean press right in, which is pretty cool. And now we've made an unholy mismatch of Parker, Parker, and Milton in the middle. Whatever. And most importantly, although the balls on the side, the engagement balls, are still steel, the center plunger isn't. I think you should be able to see pretty clearly there's no magnetism at all. So I think the center plunger on this guy is actually aluminum from how it looks. We will find out in the future because the next time I have one of these Milton's that fails, I'm not going to take it apart. I'm just going to swap it out for this Parker and we'll continue on. Again, this is a problem that is probably unique to my air compressor because the tank is rotting out of it and it's coming through the lines. But it's also one of those things where I really don't think this should be a problem. They should expect these things to have water going through them. So I don't think it's a very big ask that they kind of put up with that. They just changed that from steel to brass and charged another 50 cents for this thing. There wouldn't be any problems with them and I'd be real happy. Alrighty, got everything cleaned up. You can see this guy is still just really badly pitted. He's probably not long for this world anyway. But he's clean. Got his buddy all cleaned up as well as I can too. That's actually the side that matters. Looking pretty good. And while I was here, I went ahead and cleaned out the end of the hose as well as I can. This entire hose is probably filled with rust anyway, but eh, I'm here. Got the gasket cleaned up as well as I could. It's got kind of a dome feature on it. It's supposed to go back this way, or at least that's how it came apart. We get her put back together. Oh, wonder if I can clean that up a little bit better. Just noticing all that rust in there. Hang on, that's a little bit better. This thing's fragged anyway, so what am I really gonna be able to do? I can't do anything about the inside of it, really. We're just gonna put it back together and hope for the best. At the end of the day, I'm not gonna cry over a $10 fitting. If it dies, it dies especially when most of it's probably my fault. Screwed back in. Looks like it's centered up pretty well in there. Before I tighten it all back down, I'm just gonna work it a couple times. Just kind of help it get seated if it wants to. Feels pretty good. Looks pretty good other than the rust I can still see. So now I'm just gonna chuck that back in the vise and tighten her on up. Once again, put my vise grips on it. And, uh, probably good enough. Took some teeth off, but not bad. And no leaks. Another successful repair. So guys, I appreciate the honest feedback, but this one had enough mystery around it that I felt like we needed to revisit it. And since the opportunity came up to do so anyway, I figured we would. So as always, I appreciate you stopping in. We'll catch you on the next one. I'm Max, that's Saddington Bear, and we make videos like this all the time. Here are a couple links to some other videos we've made, and we really appreciate you guys stopping in.